City, gender, let's get it. Come on. Yeah. Bobbledy, bobbledy, bop. We are back. We are back. We are back. Shout out to the CIA, the confident, intelligent, and assertive men out there. One love, one sh- oh, one love to the FBI, the feminine, beautiful, inspirational ladies in the house. How are we doing? Welcome to the jungle, people. Welcome to the jungle. We've got fun and games. We got everything you want. All right. Candle of the evening, Santal 26. I mean, come on, it's the fall, the OG candle. And even though it is incense November, we had to switch up, the, we had to switch one time this month and go from incense to uh, one of my favorite fragrance notes in the world Rose, Amber, and Oud, and that is a new fragrance from Bond Number 9 called Nomad. Yeah, buddy. Nomad. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. I am sorry I've already announced this one before. It is selling out worldwide, but this stuff is incredible. Black Courant. Let me go ahead and read the notes because I don't want to mess it up. But this stuff, I picked this up when I was in New York City. Wow. Just wow. You know a fragrance is, is incredible when it makes you when you have to check your luggage to bring it back. Because I packed light to go to New York this last go round. But that was so good, I was at the hell with that one. And then, of course, this one right here, Desired Earth. So the note breakdown in this fragrance is pear, black currant, quince. If you ever have a quince fruit, don't worry about it. Violet leaves, rose, orris, or iris. So violet, rose, and iris. You already got me right there. 
oud, amber, vanilla, and sandalwood. So let's say that again, shall we? Pear, black Quran. Black Quran is the note that made Aventus pop. Then we get into the middle and we've got violet, which is in Bleecker Street, Oris, or iris, oris butter iris, they're in the same kind of area, and then rose. And in the base, oud, amber. Then you knock their head off with vanilla and sandalwood. This is a bad mamma jamma right here. Um, baby juice. If uh, Cartier amber, uh, uh, Cartier amber oud was baby juice, this right here, plan B can't even mess with this. <laughs> plan B can't fuck with that. And then earlier today, I was wearing the reconsidered um, Desired Earth from the Harmonist. Uh, different note breakdown on it. And people are asking what this is. This is something from Dior. It's on a, it's a, it's a, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's an it's a, it's a oil base. So anyway, I know a lot of some guys are like man, I don't like all that freaking shit, man. Don't like that, that shit, gay man. Get get some goddamn class, man. Grow up. Start wearing X. Start wearing X. Thinking that that's a thinking that's what women like to smell on men. All right, let's get into it. Let's get the likes up. Let's get the likes up, people, because. Um, if I told you it's not modern women's fault, would you believe me? If I told you it's not modern women's fault, would you believe me? I don't know if you would believe me or not, but I'm going to ask the question, is it modern women's fault? Now, if you were here last Monday when I talked about something, we're going to get into something that I uh, touched on before then. So I'm going to get right into the program. Boom, Wall Street Journal, you see her. What, what do we see there, folks? Needy Nelly. Needy Nelly. U University of Southern California pushed $115,000 online degree programs, graduate degrees that got low salaries and huge debts. And who's the pitcher? None other than I'm a PhD, and if you don't know why that's so funny, I'm a PhD. The PhD lady was from California. I'm a PhD. The prestigious private university hired a for-profit firm to recruit students to its social work master's program. Now this is online. You paid the same tuition but you didn't get to go to school on, even go on campus. Now, if you've ever talked to a woman who's got a lot of student loan debt, they will tell you how these schools sell the dream, sell the fantasy. That's why you see so many women in nursing and uh, all these other professions that have incredibly rigorous working hours, breaking these women down, law, medicine, social work, all this stuff. Piling on the debt. Let's get on into it. It's like uh, it's it started to feel like a degree meal. Over the past decade, University of Southern California has used a for profit company to help them enroll thousands of students in its online social freaking work master's degree program. Social work, people, social work. $115,000 worth of debt to get a $52,000 a year job. I'm a PhD. Just to say you got a master's. The not-for-profit school used its status symbol image to attract students from across the country. Students. Students, yeah, but I want you to understand the students they attracted, including low-income minority students it targeted for recruitment with aggressive tactics. Let's just cut to the chase. Uh, black women... You were the cream of the crop. Most students piled on debt to afford the tuition, which last year reached $115,000 for a two-year degree. The majority never even set foot on the posh LA campus, but paid the same tuition for online classes and person students. 
Recent USC social work graduates who took out federal loans borrowed the median $112,000, half of them earning a whopping $52,000 or less annually just two years later. A Wall Street Journal an analysis of the newly released U.S. Department of uh, Education data found, compared to other master's program at top two universities, USC social work degree had one of the worst combination of debt to earnings. Debt to earnings, ladies, something you should always be uh, cognizant of. How much debt are you going into versus the earning? Communication, marketing, psychology, sociology. Yeah, that's you. Criminal justice. I'm looking at you. Masters in social work is a requirement for many counseling jobs. There are less expensive ways to get one. Yada, 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 yada. Look at this. I could have gotten the same job for a much cheaper degree at a different school. 37-year-old mother of two who enrolled in the master's degree program because of its prestigious name and flexibility of online classes. Uh, to make it not sting as much, there's Becky, Susan, She's $307,000 in debt, the mother of two. And she has a job that makes about $48,000 a year. I want you to understand, she has a nice home in debt. So I want all you ladies to understand that while you're walking around out here talking about you can't get an average man, average men aren't in this much debt. But this, these are the very women who will talk about, I can't, I can't deal with an average man, or I need a man who's earning something. Yeah, because you're walking around with a house and you don't have the income potential. But what's the more egregious part of this? I want to show you the more egregious part of this is how they targeted these people. The master's boom. There's an entire article, but I want to focus on this right here. There's a, here's a young woman. Uh, Jalen Prayer owes a quarter of a million dollars and almost a quarter of a million dollars, including her undergraduate debt. Needy Nelly. USC created cartoon personas for different targeted demographics, for different races and sexes. Assessing their likelihood of a rolling, assessing their likelihood of buying. According to documents viewed by the journal, it assigned them a race, age, a motive for attending, PhD, boss chick, bad bitch, boss entrepreneur, blah, blah, blah. USC created documents about six years ago as training for marketers. The not-for-profit university created documents for the for-profit recruiters to go out and uh, pimp these people. We know what this is, right? Sell them hope, sell them dream, get them hooked on them and turn them out to trick them. That's what we know what this is, right? In addition to ner in, in addition to needy Nelly, personas like confirmed Carmen, a Latina applicant with a Cal State undergraduate degree who serves her dream was to go to US Key and USC and just hope I get in, as well as military Mike, who is eligible for veterans benefit and wants a free ride. Nelly, Carmen, Mike, each as undergraduates. GPA at or below 3.0, Money Molly, a very intelligent white applicant with a 4.0, has been admitted everywhere and avoids recruitment efforts. I just want you to understand when you guys get upset, when we start talking about image and race and this and that, this is the world, people. And all you ladies with your PhD, I'm a PhD. your master's, your bachelor's and everything else, and you can't get a man? because you've been de devoted so much of your, your early years to school. Here we go. Needy Nelly. Here, here's Needy Nelly's profile. Needy Nelly, can I call you if I have any questions about this program? Needy Nelly is 23, a, th a GPA at 3.0, lives in Los Angeles. She went to Cal State undergrad, African-American female, uh, high touch. She needs hand-holding. Calls and emails everyone, has trouble with the application, uh, conversion probability, Rating is one. Yet y'all wear these damn degrees of pride. Uh -uh. Why is this important? Well, I need you guys to understand. Uh, I'm going to look over here again. If I look down, we are almost a thousand effing likes behind. I'll shut this shit down.
Get the likes up, people. I didn't do all this is a lot of a lot of data to be going into. Because I need you to understand what's the motivation? Where need needy Nelly come from? The same place uh military Mike came from. He could have been military Mark from the black community. Where did he come from? Where did these people come from? They came from the same place. She Palpatine. Senator Palpatine. Who is that? Glad you asked. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's keep it going. Hit the like button. She Palpatine. Black women are aging alone. Black women are aging alone. I was probably one step away from being I was probably one step away from being out here on the street. Karen hit rock bottom four years ago after the market crash of 2008. Her life savings and investments were gone. She had been forced to sell the house she co-owned and lived in with her aunt and her mother. That's right. She had been forced to sell the home she lived in with her aunt and her mother. Who by then had died. Enter Sheev Palpatine or the like. Not necessarily her, but Sheev Palpatine is a baby boomer. Karen is an academic coach for Carrington Institute in Hampton, Virginia. She's always taken pride in holding steady jobs, jobs she's loved, teaching and working in the parish. But in 2013, the Virginia native declared bankruptcy. As an only child who never married or had children, Jennings, now 65, when this was written, when this was written, yeah, she's 66 now. 65, she had few relatives to lean on for her supports. Friends could only help me so far. So when I keep asking you ladies, what are you going to do if there's not a man? Understand something. This is you. All you ladies who don't think it can be you? Yeah, here it is. What family I had tried to help me in every way they could, but they couldn't. Jennings is a part of a growing number of black women who are aging alone. By the year 2060, one in four Americans 65 years or older uh -uh, By 2016, one in four Americans will be 65 years or older. So by 2060, 25% of the country will be over 65 or older. D pay attention. Why is that important? Because we're starting to face, black women are starting to face what is called a kin gap meaning that without a partner, children, siblings, or parents who are still alive, that's the kin gap. You, are, you guys are worried about the wealth gap? You better start paying attention to the kin gap. What's the kin gap? It's the buy a dog, die alone thing. It's the buy a dog, die alone. People seem to think that I was kidding or just saying stuff just to just to, you know, to, to, to get at folks and be mean. No, not hardly. You need to understand where all this is coming from. Black women face a kin gap, meaning that without a partner, children, siblings, parents who are alive, they are at higher rates than other demographics for, being, for aging alone. The gap is also widening faster than for other communities. 2.2% of black women will be kinless, elder orphans. Think of kinless as elder orphans compared to just 1% of white women. And these numbers are projected to hit over 7% for black women by 2060. Nearly 10% of black women will be elder orphans. Why does that mean, what does that mean? This means that 1.6 black, 1.6 million black women, roughly the size of the population of the entire city of Philadelphia, will be living without kin. I want you to imagine 
everybody in Philadelphia as an elder orphan black woman living without children. That's how big the problem is. Why is this a pro Why is this an issue? Because it's incredibly expensive to age alone. Gains in life expectancy don't mean years of living disease or illness free. Strong social relationships reduce the risk of mortality by 50%, according to research. And when asked, women, this lady said, honestly, that scares me more than anything. It frightens me that the older I get, I don't want to be in my apartment dead for days and nobody knows me. Ladies, black women, understand something. On one side, you got this. I'm strong, independent, don't need no man, don't need no, go get my job, something and so forth. But those women went to get those same useless degrees as they're still pumping out. Why is this important? Because did black women, did, did, is, did modern women do this to themselves? Uh-uh. They didn't do this to themselves. Let's get into the important part. Let's get into the important part now. When we going to get to the good part? And uh, the good part. When we going to get to the good part? Shout out to the good part. I said it the other day. And I'm going to say it again. Order 66. Also known as Clone Protocol 66. Now, the first woman I showed, the first, the first woman I showed, I want you to understand who that was. That's her. Remember what Darth Maul from Phantom Menace? That's the first woman I showed. Darth Maul, twin lightsaber out there doing the damn thing. Vicious, young, acrobatic. Mm-hmm. Everybody remember how he went out. Then I want you to understand the next person that, that pops up, good old Darth Vader. That's Generation X version. Generation X version. Mm -hmm. See, Maul is in college going to get his PhD, but Vader is already out here running, ripping and running. Ripping and running, doing damage. That's what's going on out here. Maul and Vader are already out here doing what they do. But how do we get to Darth Maul? How do we get to when when Darth Maul was along? It was, the clone troopers were working just fine, but the clone troopers, for those people who don't remember, the clone troopers look like this. They're the guys that were before the original stormtroopers we came across in uh, 1977. Clone troopers had something because they were clones; they were all reproduced, and in each clone. They had something implanted called Clone Protocol 66, a top secret order identifying all Jedi, black men, as traitors to the Galactic Republic, sisterhood, and therefore subject to summary execution by the Grand Army of the Republic, uh, the gynocracy. I said this the other day. The order was programmed into Grand Army clone troopers through behavioral modification biochips. This is done early on. This is done. So these guys over here are running on autopilot. And what ends up happening is if you watch the movie, it, it, a certain part in the movie, you hear Senator Palpatine after, after, <clears throat> let's do it this way. After we see this, after we see this scene right here, boom. After all of a sudden, uh, Anakin is hanging out with uh, Sidious and he's become, he's become, he's become Darth Vader now. He cut off Mace Windu's hand. He cut off Mace Windu's hand. And this is before he became the jacked up version of him. What do we hear in the background as he sends him off to destroy the Jedi? 
Anakin was good. Anakin, Anakin was a Jedi. He was all right. He went off to the to the Jedi Temple to destroy the Jedi, kill all the men. And what do you hear? It is execute order sixty six. Execute order sixty six. Order sixty six. What is order sixty six? Order sixty six is a self destruction program for women and men to automatically start operating on autopilot. What's autopilot? Go to college, get a degree because you don't need no man. Why is Order 66 so important? Because if Order 66 wasn't in place, it would it would be too damn hard to convince somebody to go to $115,000 worth of student loan debt for a social work job. If a father was in the household, no one in hell he would allow he would he would advise his child to go into that kind of debt for a peasley job. But in order for in order for all this stuff to work, all these master plans to work, because if you only think understand anything about the Sith, these guys right here are just tools. All of these people are just tools for the Sith. The Sith. The ultimate evil, the phantom menace. Who was pulling the trigger? Who were, who were, uh, who was behind the scenes orchestrating it all? Who was behind the scenes orchestrating it all? Execute order 66. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's who was behind the scenes, orchestrating it all. Big Mama. Baby Boomer Big Mama. Execute Order 66. You know what? I am a strong, independent woman. <laughs> Flash, like, Hear my womanly roar. Oh. Yeah! Ain't nobody got time for that. I told you. What did I tell you? Didn't I tell you? Cause I told you. Mm-hmm. And when did I tell you? A long time ago. And what did I say will happen when I told you? Exactly what just happened. <laughs> Execute order 66. Big mama. Baby boomer big mama. The woman, the, the generation of people who, up until baby boomers, the black community was doing, was growing leaps and bounds. But baby boomers across this country are the most selfish generation on, on, on record. That's why Big Mama's house is gone, yo, because the baby boomer, yo, 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 Big Mama and them sold it. Everything that the family had out of Jim Crow, the South, and slavery was liquidated and used under these under these women. These are the women that told their daughters, don't, don't be go get you a degree so you don't have to worry about no man, even though they saw their own mothers married for 40 and 50 years. These were this was the first generation of women who decided to uh take measly benefits or no benefits and decided to become the first wave of single mothers. These are the people, and what happened under their watch? Well, under their watch, this is what happened. They raised a bunch of angry, irrational, illogical, feelings-based men, and I'm in that group. You remember what happened to Darth Maul, don't you? All he was fueled was by anger. But that Darth Maul, if you know his story, it's rather tragic. It ended in the Star Wars series, but in the uh, the, the Clone Wars, the animated series, they actually played it all the way out. He has a really nice story arc. But he was used by Big by, he was used by Sidious. He was used by Sidious, and once and once he was gone, not no no more need for him. Here's the next one. Darth. Darth Vader. Darth. Darth. <laughs> Darth Vader. Darth Vader came along as the second apprentice. Well, probably the third apprentice. Uh, second apprentice that we know of. 
And he became the right hand man. Sidious wanted to turn him. Turn him on the Jedi. Turn him on everything else. And master plan was to do what? Undermine those Jedi so we can have the we can have this place to ourselves. Execute order 66. And no one and none of them, no one on, on the dark side got benefit of their work except Sidious, the mastermind of it all. Rather brilliant plan, I gotta give it to him. Why is Order 66 so important? Order 66 is rooted in the base of our culture. And it is why so many of our women are just operating on pure instinct. It's a biochip, it's been programmed in you. Why did I pull this person up? This person right here was the first trooper uh, whose chip activated too early. It, his chip activated too early, too, and he ended up killing, uh, he ended up executing uh, Jedi Master Tip Lar. And they didn't know what was going on. They thought he had a tumor or something, something and so forth. But what really happened is he was dying. He's like, they removed the chip and it killed him. He's like, the nightmares are starting. What nightmares? The nightmares we all have. And remember, running around in fear, scarcity, and lack. And, and you look at the other clone troopers when they were, he was saying this, they're like, you get nightmares too? They're all running on the same program. The boys are running on it. The girls are running on it. It's a self-destruct program. And when, when, and when triggered by sign language from Big Mama, shame, insults, guilt, the need to be right, men, the boys and girls operate on command. The women, the girls go to destroy the boys and the boys go to destroy themselves. The girls go to destroy the boys. The boys go to destroy themselves. Execute order 66. You don't have to like what I'm saying. You can think I'm 100% wrong, but I need you to ask yourself, why are you so, why are so many of our women susceptible to such high student loan debt, high consumer debt? Why are so many of our women uh, in a position where they're visibly not happy eating themselves into I, I'm tired of seeing TikToks with women that are five and 600 pounds dancing and everybody in the comment section talking about, it. go girl, you look good. I'm like, that is a 20 some odd year old girl, young lady who is not going to live very long. But we, but, but what are we doing? We have to tell them if you can't say anything, you got to accept everything because order 66 has been, has been uh, executed. And what did it do? Order 66 decimated the Jedi ranks. And what did Order 66 do? It decimated male authority in the black community. And we've had my lifetime of Order 66. Where are we at? Are we better off? Are we better off? Or are we worse? 80% of our children born out of wedlock. By the time black boys reading at the fourth grade level, we know the statistics on black boys. Black girls, not 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 knocking it out of the ballpark. You look at the, I look at the obesity rates, and it is terrifying. When I look at, I was watching this woman on TikTok today, and she had to be every bit of six hundred pounds. Talking about, come get, come bring that, bring that D here, and I'm like. And they were like, ooh, it, girl, smile. You look beautiful. Big girl is happy with herself. Ladies and gentlemen, Order 66 is an order, a death sentence to where men can say nothing, to where even if a man says that, that we shouldn't be championing that, what, what has he done? He's automatically set for destruction because you have no voice. You're not supposed to be talking anyway. Ladies, it's not helping you either. I got one question for the ladies in the audience. You guys cannot think I'm full of shit. You can say he's a misogynist. He hates women. He's gay, whatever. You can say whatever you want to. I got one question for all you ladies. For all of you ladies. What is your mother leaving you? 
When your mother dies, when your mother, big mama, nene, whoever, the woman that raised you, when she dies, what is she leaving you? If the answer is nothing, you got some thinking to do. Well, that's not how it's supposed to happen. Parents are supposed to leave their children something. Your mama got left something. The baby boomers got left something. Even through Jim Crow slavery, segregation, everything else, the baby boomers got left something. A little piece of land. A little something. What is what what, what they leaving you? And the sad reality is so many women, you are your mother's retirement plan. That's the truth. You're your mother's retirement plan. <laughs> That's why you had to have that PhD and go out and stay single. Because of, because as a single woman, you can do just like the story said. Move in with your mother and your aunt. And then when they die, you're too old. I knew this was not going to be a, a happy broadcast. Because you can go look at the numbers yourself. That's what starts. Why would a mother who wants to see... Why? 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 If you want better for your children, or did you set them on the set them to be alone? Again, go to that story. It's not any and you ladies, I talk to woman after woman after woman, and no woman thinks it's going to be them. Again, the article says, "Why are black women aging alone?" I was probably one step away from being out there on the streets. Four years after the market crash in 2008, Karen's life savings was gone. Her investments were gone. She had been forced to sell the home she co-owned and lived in with her aunt and her mother. No men, older women, and her. What does she do for a living? She's an academic coach. But she was, and I'm sorry, she said she chose to. Yeah, it was also incented and it was looked favorably upon. Our, our, generate, our community doesn't really uh, preach the need for relationships. We champion this kind of stuff. We'll say she's living her own truth. She's strong and this and that. And even in this article, it, it tried to make it seem like it was something valuable, but that's that that bull crap. Liberal. Here's it says: Growing economic independence over time has empowered women to leave unhappy relationships or avoid them altogether. I want you to understand the bullshit in that sentence. Growing economic independence. How are you independent if you are almost out on the street? The independence they talk about is a lie. It's marketing to get you to buy that goddamn degree online at USC. They tell you you're strong, independent, the backbone of the community, and you'll, you'll operate on Order 66 and sign up for more. But at the end of the day, your debt to income ratio of your degree is negative. This woman is not economically independent. Nor is she empowered. But the whole notion is growing economic independence empower to leave unhappy, real, unhappy relationships. Or avoid them altogether. And that's how this shit was sold to you. I can do bad all by myself. Get on your own, girl, because in case it don't work out, you'll have something to fall back on. Oh, yeah, I told you it's going there. You hear this stuff to this day. I was talking to a young lady, 26 years old, on Instagram yesterday, whose ultimate dream was to be a stay-at-home mother and homeschool her children. But she's so worried about trying to be a boss chick because at the end of the day, I don't want a man to leave me and I got nothing. But we don't do that. 
Y'all leave more than we do. But this is what's been told to you. Your bar chicks, your bad chicks, go get your degree, this, that, start your own business. Use your prime years. It was sold to you. It was sold to you by... That's who it was sold to you by. And it's always sold to you by the fear of Mr. in the closet or the color purpling of black America. That's what I keep saying. The color purple. Every black man is having to play against Mr. and waiting to exhale. Shit that we ain't ever done to you. But I want you to understand every time they write some truth, they try to balance it with this bull crap about, well, you know, uh, women have been empowered to be in. OK, well, you're you're also empowered to be homeless. Gray divorce. What's the term gray divorce? Look, let's see. Let's look up gray divorce. Uh, let's see. I'm going to open up the lines because I'm going to go straight into it because I, I need you ladies to understand that 7% in the next 20, in the next 30 years, uh, next, um, next 40 years, half, half of the country is going to, 25% of the country is going to be 65 or older. What happens when everybody's getting older, not married, not having any kids? You get a bunch of elderly old pe elderly people by themselves. Um, look up the term great divorce. And like that woman said, uh, I was one step away. The difference for her is she grew up in a world to where she can still get social security benefits. None of that stuff is going to be available for you guys. It's gone. The phrase great divorce refers to divorce in, uh, involving spouses over age 50 who are typically baby boomers. See, a lot of this stuff was, a lot of what we are dealing with has been put on to the generation by the baby boomers. They're still holding on to power. They, won't, they don't want to give up power in Washington. They're still uh, living under the world and the constructs in which they grew up. And they're not in our world. But all this stuff that was told to baby boomers, from baby boomers to millennials, millennials to uh, baby boomers to Generation X, Generation X to millennials, millennials to zennials, it all comes from here. Big mom and them, don't worry about it. How many times have I sat there and talked to women who say my mother uh, was married for 30 years, never had to do anything, but she pushed me to go get a job and a career. And now I'm out here by myself making $45,000 a year. All in the hope that, well, in case you ever to get, to get in with a man who was to do something to you. That's bull crap. Here it is. Of course, some contributors to kinlessness like great divorce aren't all harmful increased female participation in the labor force has enabled older women to exit and avoid unsatisfying marriages more easily <laughs> i want you guys to understand that increasing women's participation in the labor force has enabled older women to exit or avoid unsatisfying marriages more easily. But what it doesn't allow you to do is earn enough. Here's what it keeps down. It's particularly important with life expectancy rising. If you're 65 or older and no longer happy in your marriage, Brown says two decades could be a long time to spend with somebody you're not in love with anymore. Uh, let me go ahead and put this back to you. While other groups are staying married and gaining trillions of dollars in buying power. In the black community, we'll keep on being worried about your individual happiness. 
Why? Because there is a lot of money in keeping black men and black women single. There's a lot of money in dysfunction. There's a lot of it. And here's the reality. It ain't the men who are talking about this. Your, 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 black men didn't put this out here. Baby Boomer men didn't put it out here. This was put out by Big Mama them. But I may be wrong. Let's talk about it. Because what we continue here, what we tend to hear all the time is, well, you got to protect yourself. You got to protect your interests. All right. But if you're not, if you don't, if you don't know you're going to be in the top 10 percent of all female earners. Then what you're going to do, because there is not going to be a government bailout. Recording in progress. There won't be anything. Who's going to pay the bills? Because getting older is expensive. And whenever I talk to women, it seems like every woman seems to think they're going to live a healthy life and that, it, uh, that, if, and, and that they, if they need to, they could just go back to work. This is a real conversation. This ain't about sound bites and clips and that and this and you know, buy a dog and dial on. This is real. I didn't expect this one to be over the top. I didn't expect this one to have a lot of participation because a lot of young, a lot of young people uh, don't think this is them. But if you're 25, if you're a 25 year old woman, I'm talking to you. Why am I talking to you? Because if you're living your life like a 25 year old Strong, independent. I don't need no man. I'll, I'll, I'll do what I need to do, and then after I'm established, I'll find a husband. Uh, in thir- at by by thirty years old, then I'll start my family. You're in the, You're there too. If you weren't raised to think of marriage and relationship as a viable financial. Uh, well, if you weren't raised to think of relationship, you're raised to think of self. That's you too. Now, see, who is it really important for? It's see, women who are over thirty are now st- women who are twenty nine or older are starting to think about this. Women who are thirty nine or older, they've been hit in the face with this. But women who are in their forties, who are having to start over. Women who are in their 40s who are having to sit there and deal with the reality that I don't have a man. I don't have any prospects. I don't have any skills. And I am likely going to be spending the rest of my life. That's who's really panicking right now. Because men, men, uh, this is where it kind of starts to benefit men. We die before y'all. And men are much more simple. Men, men can go live in a, 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 an efficiency apartment furnished uh, over, a, over a gas station. And as long as we can get Sunday night football, uh, a, 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 a sandwich, and our favorite soda and chips, we Gucci. You ladies. This is why I keep hearing all these old women talking about, girl, we got our girls trips and this and that. You ain't taking no girls trip on 40, on earning less than uh, $40,000 a year. Very real choice is going to have to be made. Ladies, let's talk about it. What's the plan? How are you going to get up out this mug? Because, and do you ladies ever talk to your mothers? The women that told you don't worry about getting no husband, get your degree, get the what 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 is your mother what is your mama leaving you? Is your mother leaving you anything? That's a fair question. I think it's a fair question. Uh, I'm going to take that back, um, ladies in the chat room. I'm going to let you guys come in. You don't have to necessarily get on camera, but you do need to be on. I need you guys to ask a question, ladies. Is it a fair question to ask, what is your mother leaving you? I mean, because how this is supposed to work 
You're supposed to, a woman is supposed to get with the man early on in life. They're supposed to consolidate, enjoy some time together, plan a family, start a family. They're both supposed to work because most people don't, you, most people have to, most, most family members have to work. Only the top 10, 20% of people, women don't have to work. Most people have to work. But you're supposed to live in your means, live, you know, a, 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 a healthy life. You're supposed to invest, buy a little something. But at the end of the day, you're supposed to, mom and daddy have life insurance policies. They have their burial policies. And they leave their kids a little something. They don't have to leave, make them rich, but they leave them something. Most, if we are honest, many of you ladies know that y'all don't have the money to eat. Your mama don't even have the money to be buried. Is your mother not, is your mother not only not leaving you anything, is she leaving you another bill? When your mom goes, uh, when your, when, when your mom and your aunt, are they, are you going to have to pay that? I know this sounds morbid. But if y'all don't start talking about this stuff because who's going to do it for you? Summer, you need to get on camera. Uh, I don't see. Okay, you you guys need to connect your audio. When you when you click to join in, you need to click the button that says uh, connect to audio via Wi-Fi or whatever. Some of you guys are all right so let's go um uh your audio is not connected uh cin your audio is not connected lauren you need to be i need to see who you are if i can't see you i can't i can't bring you in okay there you go uh go ahead lauren unmute yourself Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I am well, how old are you? I'm 28. All right, so uh, what do you got on the topic? I know I, I covered a lot. What do you got for me? What did I miss? Well, I wouldn't say you really missed anything at all. Um, it just really spoke to me just because a lot of what you had shared as far as, um, you know, mothers encouraging us to go to, you know, get our degrees mm -hmm. and just worry about making your own money. I dealt with that okay. for, so, for so long, right before I actually graduated from college. And um, me making the decision to move in with my now fiance, mm -hmm. she actually had a lot of issues with that mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning. She felt like I was throwing my life away. Really? And so... Oh yeah. <laughs> she was like, Oh, you know, that's not the smartest thing to do. You know, you should consider, you know, mm -hmm. making your own money and, and starting your life and you okay. don't need to be rushing into a relationship. Okay. But I had just graduated with my bachelor's. I was 22 at the time. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, so, is your, is your mm -hmm. mother, is your mother married? Yes. <laughs> okay. She, uh, this is, yeah. Mm -hmm. She's married three times now. Okay. So when she said she didn't suggest that, what did she, what was her, what was her plan for you? What was her plan for you? I mean, from what she had shared with me, she, her, her plan was just for me to be able to like live on my own. Um, enjoy my 20s mm -hmm. you know date as long as possible okay. and yeah that was yeah that was really her her push was to so you so ladies I'm going to suggest you guys start asking your mothers this question okay then what am I supposed to do because a lot of times is, go ahead <laughs> I would bring up that question a lot I'm like well what do you expect me to do I I mean, you know, yes, I have, you know, interests mm -hmm. and, you know, things that bring me joy. However, I, I want a family, right? Like I want to have children and, you know, we, me and my fiance, we do have uh, a daughter. 
Yeah. And um, yeah, so, she, she also felt like it was too soon. I mean, I, I got pregnant when I was 25 and she was like, oh, yeah. so, so that was another uh, issue. Let, and, so let me ask you a question. So your mother's been married three times. Yeah. And she's still currently married, but she doesn't want she didn't want you to get married. At least, At least not as like early. Right. Like she she wanted me to like wait a, pretty much like after my twenties. Like think about marriage like later, later down the line. Hmm. Did she like your does yeah. she like your fiance? Actually, <laughs> she has a, a lot of choice words, but I think it's, she doesn't really have any reason to not like him. I just think it's just because I made the decision to. Well, do you guys live in the same city? Start my life with him after college. Say you guys live in the college. same city? No, 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 no. How often I do had, you? I had moved. How often do you? Moved. So how often yeah. do you speak to your mother? Uh, not as often lately. Um, well, I'm going to make we it. We I, I'm going to. I'm going to say this. That, there may be a delay here. Um, oh, okay. There may be a slight delay, but I'm going to say okay. that one. She may have her own reasons, but it doesn't sound like she gave you a good reason. Well, number one, number two. If you already are living with your fiance and you have a child, y'all need to go ahead and formalize that, move on down life, and then, you know, right. that's your mother. You can, you can, you can respect her, but right, um, right. But a right. lot of times, women give their daughters advice because they're trying to right. vicariously live through their daughters, and yes. whether they yes. want to admit it or not. Whether women want to admit it or not, your biological imperative is for security. So when women don't have a man that makes them feel secure, they look for other things to secure them. And the next thing in nature that provides you security is family. A lot of these ladies want to keep you guys single so you can bail them out. Because if they were in happy relationships, they would be on board with you moving down the path. That's the that's the unfortunate part of it. Hold, hold on just a second, okay, uh, Mr. Turner, hold on. Um, mm -hmm. Hold on, mm -hmm. who's this? T Tiny, unmute yourself. Um, hello? It's Taisha. Taisha, how are you? Yes, I'm finding yourself. Good, how old are you? 44. Have you called in before? Yes, but I couldn't get through for some reason. It, I was having an audio issue. All right. What do you got on the topic? Um. Well, I've been married for 16 years and Big Mama taught me exactly what you were saying. You don't need a man for anything. Go to school. But I noticed that all the women in my family was single. My mm -hmm. grandmother, 65, she's single. My three aunties, none of them have a man. They're single. Okay. And they all seem miserable. But I did make that mistake of teaching my daughters that. Um, I have okay. my older daughter who's in college, I just had to call her about two months ago and tell her I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of sad because my youngest one, I think I've taught her, she's 16, I've taught her that for so long that she has, she's, I'm never getting married. That's her attitude now. Now, uh, did you say you, hold on, ma'am, hold on just a second. Did you say you're currently married? Yes. Is the, is your youngest daughter is the man you married to her father? No, we, me and my husband, have no kids together. We have a blended family. Okay. All of the kids are a year apart, and it's four of them. So you, you said your youngest child says she's never getting married. And she's sixteen. Yes. When you when she, when she says she's never getting married, why did she tell you why she says that? Yes. 
she said that um she doesn't she doesn't trust men and I'm I tell her like you're still a little girl you she doesn't even have a boyfriend um she has seen me and my husband have issues nothing like abusive but she doesn't understand that you work through those things um we're in a nice house because of my husband they pool trampoline we take trips you know, mm-hmm. but well, I mean, let me let, okay. What's his relationship? What is your 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 husband's relationship like with your daughter? He tell them like the girls a while ago. You know, he talks to them. He makes sure we in church, and he tell them that you know women need to be submissive, and they don't like that. Okay. They don't. Where, like it. Where's her father? Uh, he died. Okay, so here's the thing, man. Um. I, I know the inclination to try to, we got stuff, but if she's 16 years old, teenagers are a modern invention, okay? So she may be your baby, but she's not a baby. And that's not her biological father, her biological father's past. Have you ever considered getting her to be able to sit down with a counselor or a therapist? You're not the person, you're not the person, I'm going to just tell you as a parent, you're not, you're likely not the person that's going to be able to get through to her because she can't, there's certain things she can't say to you. Okay. Okay. Because, I mean, I'm sure you're doing the best you can, but at 16, if she says, I don't like me and I don't trust me and I don't want, that needs to be addressed and maybe she can't, she doesn't feel like she can do have that discussion with mama because she already know your point of view. And then she knows that her, her stepfather is going to come in with his point of view. And at 16, she is at the age where you can lose her. She ain't but two years away from leaving. Right. Right. So right. this, and, that's this what I'm afraid of. But, and this is why I'm saying this is where as parents, this ain't about being right. This ain't about us being right or having our way. It's about not losing a kid. So I would, I would, I would book her an appointment to go talk to somebody that she knows she can talk to. And here's the thing: you uh, and I mean somebody who's covered by a patient doctor confidentiality, to where you can't be getting all in that business too. Because okay. if you got, because if you got a blended family, the adults tend to be. The adults tend to think, I tell these kids something. These kids, are having, they feel how they feel. And they see what they see. And unfortunately, at our age, we didn't grow up in a world that was disconnected. With computers and smartphones and everything else. These kids get a lot of information, a lot of different opinions. Um, so right. consider that. Just consider that because there's no reason she should feel the way. Like If I'm hearing you correctly, there's no reason she should feel the way she feels. But she does feel that way, and it has to be addressed. Hold on, let me do this real quick. Um, mute you real quick. Um, come back in, people. Uh, it's okay. You have to show yourself. Bow. <coughs> Go ahead, mute you real quick. Um, see, another thing, folks, I will say that. We have to also get to the point to where we understand how this Im- impacted the boys. This impacted the boys in a way to where you got a lot of men who are moving out here who a lot of men are like, they don't want to get married. They don't want to deal with women because the message that's been communicated to men is that if you ain't rich, you don't have no power in the relationship. I want you to juxtapose it against what we just had. You got a 16-year-old young lady saying they don't trust men. So what is a young man who's starting out? What does he have to offer to somebody who has a negative attitude towards men? Uh, Let me get to Kay. And then after that, Miriam. Kay, go ahead. Okay. Hello, Kay. Okay. 
Oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. All right. Okay, everybody, Kay seems to have her, um, the volume on in the back. Okay, go ahead. Um, can you hear me? Turn off YouTube in the background. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? I can now. How okay. are you? Good. I'm good. How are you? Good evening. Good. How old are you? I'm 34. All right. What do you got for me on the topic? Did, did I need to be on the YouTube? Because I saw you already put in there, but. Uh, I generally do. Do you not want to be on? I can take you off. Okay, yeah, so the topic, the topic. Yeah, so here's, before we get started, there seems to be a problem with the sound. You only need to be on Zoom. Turn off YouTube, turn everything else off. Is that better? Mm-hmm. Okay, so go ahead. So your, go ahead. Your, question, your question was, what, what is our parents, our mother leaving us? Mm -hmm. And um, my mother, she unfortunately, even though she is married, she's not leaving me anything. And I was actually something I was concerned with about getting um, life insurance for her. But I am married. And my mom did at a young age tell us, like, we need to be married. We need to have children. And she raised me to be a submissive wife. I was just actually talking to my mother-in-law about that, about the difference in how we were raised. And so that you have, I was pretty you have children. But Yes, I do. And I'm currently pregnant with our fifth, so. Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, we need so, more of that. So do you have any siblings? I do. I'm the baby of four. A any other girls? Um, yeah, there's a, the sisters, the oldest, and two brothers in between, and I'm the baby girl. So you're, uh, are your brothers and sisters married as well? They are. Everyone's married. Everyone has children. Um, well, no, my brother that's three is older than me. He's um, recently divorced, mm -hmm. but everyone is married with children. And um, y'all need to write a book. Y'all need to write a book and start a YouTube channel. I'm serious. We need to see yeah. more people with families. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I was just thinking about the whole mom thing and, um, when you mentioned earlier about can modern women handle um, being with a a high value man, it's not it's not easy because men in general don't want to be questioned. They when it's, I'm a stay at home wife and mom. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things that come along with it. So and and I haven't been working for over five years now. So a and, lot of things that come along with it. Um, yes. But yes, like, uh, would you? Here's a question. Um, mm -hmm. the, the life is about choices and trade offs. Um, would you rather have an average guy and have to work? No, no, but when you, when you, <laughs> no, but when you consider, and I never like looked at the situation like how value or, uh, or a, a, a non high value man. It's not that serious to me. I didn't. I went into this relationship working, not caring if I had to work or not. But there was a time and a point when we were having children. He said mm -hmm. he didn't want me to work anymore, and right. it was so. And that was hard to let go. And I have a degree. I went to school. Um, but well, it sounds mom, like it sounds like you were. I think it sounds like you are winning more than anybody else. Uh, all, yeah. and here's the thing life is life is hold on life is going to always be about there's nothing perfect it's always choices and trade-offs um and i don't know why some there's some women who just really um i'll, I'll say that at the end go ahead Miriam. let me go ahead and try to get through other people too and then amanda you have that hello good evening god father hi how are you it sounds kind of loud Oh, I'm sorry. I'll take it down. All right. So how old are you? I'm 39. All right. So what do you have for me on the topic? What is my mother leaving me? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, whole, the whole question is, uh, I asked, did, did, is this modern women's fault? And because I think most women are in a position where they're unmarried and aging alone. Are you in that category or are you married? 
I am in that category, and um, at 39, like you said, it hits you in the face. That's what's happened. Okay. I realized, you know, I was one of those women who won early. You, uh, you speak about the one that you should have been with, but you you uh, broke up with them. Mm-hmm. You know, so let me ask you, you, hold on, before we get into this, are you on a laptop, computer, or are you on your mobile phone? I'm on my laptop. Is my sound not working? Yeah, yeah it, it just, it, it just, uh, okay, can you get a little close to the microphone because it sounds real uh, muffled. Mumble? I'm sorry. Is that's that all right. Better? We'll just go with it. We'll just go with it. Go ahead. Okay. So, I do apologize. That's all right. We'll just go with it. You don't have to be perfect. So, uh, you have any children? I have a son. He's 10 years old. All right. Um, and... So what's the retirement plan? I don't have one, and uh, because I haven't been in um, a relationship for a while, you know the the muscles have atrophied. Okay. I, I, when was your last relationship? It was about eight months ago. How long did that last? That was about three to four months. Okay. So fast forward 20 years and what does life look like? At 60, what does life um, look like? 60 looks like. That's what I'm trying to figure out now. You know, that, that deficit that I'll have to come up with. Um, and like you said, just... Uh, trying to secure uh, somebody to have the next 20 years with. Not somebody, a man. Mm -hmm. I need to be clear about that. Well, so how are you going about doing that? Um, Right now I've had to get some therapy, get some issues sorted out, and then, um, you know, of course, drop some weight, and then just be be the best version of myself at this time. Okay, I'm gonna bring in Amanda real quick. Hold on just a second, Miriam. I'm gonna mute you real quick. Um, I told you, man, when, it, when 40 is a real wake, 30, late 30 is a real wake up call. Miriam, go ahead and unmute yourself. I mean, not a Miriam, Amanda, Amanda, Amanda. Hello. Yes. Oh, hello. Good evening, Mr. Samuels. How are you? I'm okay. Um, I definitely have a lot to say about the topic. I've been watching you now for about uh, maybe three or four months. Okay. And I just agree with so much of what you're saying. Um, you know, I am 42. Um, mm-hmm. I, if you can't believe it or not, I, when I was younger, I used to be an eight. <laughs> I mm-hmm. did have an opportunity with a high value man. He was a veterinarian and I wrecked that relationship. Um, okay. So now I am a 42 and I'm in school and I'm going to school to be a dentist because like you said, um, if I'm going to be alone, I need to be able to have, uh, some financial way to retire. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm doing. I just, I just agree with so much of what you said, but I would like to say that growing up my mother, she did teach me to be a wife, but she, but she also taught me, she said, you know, have an education, be able to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I wish she would have taught me to maybe be more of a wife and Mm -hmm. find a husband. And I wish that that was something that was instilled in me. Yeah, because that's what I was going to ask. I I was going to ask that there's the practical side of it. Mm -hmm. But going back to school and and trying to secure high income, higher income skills Mm -hmm. at middle age. Mm -hmm. It's tough. um, very tough. I have okay. no children, so you know. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to also bring some somebody else in too. Uh, Jenny, your microphone's not connected. I can't pronounce your first name, but it starts with an S I B. S I B. Hello. Unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Uh, can I not be on video, please? Yeah. How old are you? 
All right. Uh, so what do you got for me on the topic? Um, I was just speaking on about, on that mothers don't leave us anything to leave on. So it's like um, the same as the first caller. And she said that her mother didn't want her to get married. She wanted her to live like life, even though she was married. And I come from a traditional home. My mm -hmm. mother is married for 30 years now. Sorry, I'm nervous. It's okay. <laughs> my mother is married for like 30 years now. And um, my husband, I'm married now. He came home. He came to me actually with a marriage proposal mm -hmm. when I was 20 years old. And when I tried to tell my mother, she didn't approve at that age. She was like, you're too young. You still have to finish varsity. This was my second year of varsity. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I want to be clear. So, hold on, hold on, hold on just a second. Hold on. I want to be clear. Your mother disapproved, not your father? My mom, yes. Okay. Is that how it's supposed to work? Actually, no, it's not. But um, okay. you start with your mother when uh, it's like, when the bride price is paid, it's Lobola uh -huh. here, it's a bride price. You have to tell your mother first. Right. And then your mother tells me. So I had to tell my mother that um, a man is coming to pay Lobola at bride price. Uh -huh. Like for me to be right. And my mom said that um, you just started varsity your second year and you can't just go off with a man right now. You haven't even graduated. So I had to just postpone till I was 20, 22. Last year. I'm curious. I'm so, curious. I'm curious. You can teach me something here. Okay. You you have to tell your mother first. And yes. isn't your mother supposed to tell your father? She is. She okay. is did, supposed to tell my father. Did she do that? I'm not sure if she did actually, but I cuz cuz you said um, you cuz you said you had to postpone. Yes. So if you if he paid the bride price and he told your mother in the process is mother supposed to go tell the father, how does she have the power to postpone, make you postpone anything if she did what she was supposed to do? Um, okay, it's like this. Uh, my father is hardly home because he has two wives. So okay. most of the time we speak to mother okay. about- I get it. That, um, I, I get it. But, but again, they still support- as I, I and maybe I'm misunderstanding, but he's supposed to, you're supposed to tell your mother, and your mother is not supposed to make up her mind. She's supposed to go tell the man she's married to. Yes, exactly. But she didn't do that. Okay, and and she posts, and you postponed your situation for how long? Um, I was twenty, actually mm -hmm. nineteen, twenty eighteen. I was nineteen. Okay. So, so how I long was did you post? So she said I was too young, and she didn't want me to get. How long married. did you post? How long did you postpone? Until I was twenty-one. So two years. Until last year. Two Until years. Last year, I think it's two years. Yeah, from twenty eighteen to twenty twenty. What, did, you, what did your father say? What did your father say when he? Okay, see what I'm not understanding is how a woman can do that. How because mm. I'm not understanding if he came to pay the bride price and he told your mother and that's the process. Your mother's supposed to go tell your father. But it sounds to me like your mother overstepped her bounds of the way your culture works and she made you postpone or you decided to postpone. When did your father find out about this man wanting to marry you? He found out um, 20, 2019 when I graduated. Uh, that's when my mom told him that there's a man who wants to pay but this the is how long, But this is how long, but this is how long after he had paid the bride yeah. price. Okay. Oh, he hadn't paid the bride price yet. Well, he so wanted to. Can I just he would. Think? Okay, I get it. He had. He wanted. Right. Okay. So, I, so do you? Can you not go around your mother and go tell your dad? I could do that. I, um, it's the. I just didn't want to disappoint mom. Or Thank you very much. Let me put it up on the damn screen, people. <laughs> there it is, Darcidious people. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. Even in this culture, you got women out overstepping their boundaries and daughters listening. You should have went around your mother because your mother was wrong. According to your culture and tradition, was your mother right or wrong? She was wrong. Cause and it was wrong for a man and daughter and daughter and daughter. You're wrong to listen to her. 
Yes. You're wrong to listen to her. You should have over you should have honored your father over your mother. That's what you should have done. Because as a young woman and young wife. Is- huh? Am, am I missing something here? Oh, sorry. I mean, am I missing something here? I mean, that was not in her purview. To, to It wasn't a couple of weeks. It was an entire year. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, see, okay. folks, I, I, I wanted to get to that point because something didn't sound right. That this man was ready because what if, because I look at it this way. What if he said, okay, fine, I'm not going to wait. Well, he he understood that I was very young. He said that it doesn't matter. Who's me. supposed to make the decision? Your mother or your father? My my father. Then why, as you as the daughter, did you not go to your father when you know that? Uh, it's something I regret even to this day. I wish I did it sooner. Like I wish I got married sooner. But well, yes. the point is. Mothers have a special line to their children's heart. Your mother manipulated you is what happened. And you need to hear that. Your mother stepped outside of your religious, your cultural, everything, and you know it. And she made you feel guilty and not even go to your father, the man who's supposed to make the decision. Your mother was wrong. And in this case, you were wrong because you didn't honor your father's position. You should have cared more about what your father thought than disappointing your mother because your mother should have been disappointed because she was acting out of line. What about that young man's family? What if his, I mean, I don't know what his family had to say about it. I mean, I'm just saying that I want you to think about it because now you're a young wife and you're going to have a daughter. And if you're going to do it, do it the right way. And in my opinion, when women start stepping out of line, doing things like that, it's chaotic. Luckily, it worked out for you, I guess, that he decided to wait or whatever. Luckily, his family didn't say anything about it either, but that's not how it's supposed to go. But thank you for being honest. Uh, hold on. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you, man, that's that's crazy. So many of these women just, I'm going to just do what I'm going to do. And see, that's why I think it's funny that we think this womanist, feminist, Stuff is viral. It, it 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 seeps everywhere. Young ladies, you guys need to learn how to call your mothers on their bullshit. Just because your mother gave birth to you does not mean she's God. Your mother is fallible. Your mother is wrong. Just like y'all don't have any problem judging men. When men don't do what we're supposed to, y'all are quick to call up dad ain't this, dad ain't that. Okay. And it, and if it's justified, that makes sense. Uh, and I'm saying this so if there's a young lady out there who can hear and hears this and they recognize that, you know what? My mother is manipulating my situation too because that's the whole purpose of this. Is it modern women's fault? You ladies have been manipulated by elder women. It wasn't the men who did this. <laughs> All right, we're going to get to the next person. Uh, next in the list. Okay, oh, your, your audio is fine. Your mic is fine. Now it's connected. All right, down the line. Chini, Chini, Chini. Unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hi. Hi. Uh, How old are you? I'm 42. All right. What do you got for me on the topic? Well, um, I just started listening to you, and it's like I've always thought about this stuff for a long time. And, like, my community, it's really, like, probably pretty tough to, to find like a match but um i've always known that there's like you know females have to have some utility and we have to 
you know, we have to make do with what we have. And it's interesting to hear you talking about all these subjects, but there are a couple things that I kind of feel like maybe I haven't watched enough of you, but it's like kind of unclear. Like, go ahead. Something that I have heard that. So go ahead with the question. Um, well, your question about the, the topic of the thing is that whose fault is it? And um, in one sense, I could be like, well, who knows? Maybe it's the people who want to get more votes. They want to break down the family. And then they want to, like, get more people just, like, kind of enslaved. And I don't know. It's weird. But in one kind of weird big picture sense, it's like um, one thing that I've heard that from my brother, actually, weak men create bad times. Bad times create strong men. Okay, so what's unclear? Okay, okay, hold on. What's unclear about what I say? What can I clear up for you? Oh, um, I guess it's unclear, like, um, what, like, what's the plan that you kind of have for, um, for females or for women? Like, what, what do you say is the solution? I, I kind of hear. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um. The plan is it's always the same. What do you want? I don't have a plan for all females. I ask the question, what do you want? What do you want? What are you prepared to do to get what you want? I mean, the plan, well, I'm sure that- the plan for, for families and communities has been set for thousands of years. That hasn't changed. Traditional nuclear family is the best vehicle we have to raise solid citizens and children. That's of the basis of the nu- yeah. the basic building block of communities, uh, cities, states, fam- uh, and countries. That's the basic building block. Yeah. So, but it comes down to what what do women want? I don't know. Well, but, I think that women have been lied to by feminism by. Um, I don't know, like, whatever, yeah. the, like, modern agendas there are, I don't know, but if they've been lied to so hard that, like, how can a woman, like, overcome hy- hypergamy, you know? Well, hypergamy doesn't need, hy- hypergamy doesn't need to be overcome. Hypergamy is... What is that? Hypergamy does not necessarily need to be overcome. The answer to your question I think you're asking me is... What if women have been lied to and it's what now? And for some, it's too late. For some, it's too late. The Titanic has hit the iceberg. The the Titanic has hit the iceberg. The ship is going to sink. A, A large percentage of women are going to sink. They can't be saved. Now, I, I'm lucky, like, product of, of a lot of this stuff. I, I know that. Like, I'm pretty much, like, on food stamps, and I'm not, like, I'm not even trying to look for, like, you know, high high value guy. I'd be lucky, you know, but it's, it's like, I'm really lucky, I feel, that my mother, okay, you know, she was I need, married. Okay, I need, I need to get to some other people, so let me get, ask you a few questions. Are you single or are you married? I'm currently single. Do you have any children? I have one four-year-old. Okay. And you you said you're 40, how old again? 42. Uh, were you married so to your... Left. Hold on. Were you married to your child's... Fa- okay. Uh, when you reach retirement age, are you going to have your $2.4 million in cash needed to retire? I live on a little farm. And I, um, okay, I, still gonna need money, like, ma'am. Ma'am, due respect. I, I mean, I'm, I'm past cows that I milk, and I, ma'am, I ma'am, 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 little house on the prairie is still in the United States of America. Medical care is still what it is. You're still gonna need money, okay? I'm from Oklahoma, I'm from Oklahoma, I get it. The question is, are you going to are you going to have the money you need to retire to live from 65 to 85? That's the question. 
I am on food stamps. And so the answer is no. Um, so the answer is no. I, I have so the answer, so here's the question for women, okay? You got a lot of questions for a lady that's on food stamps. You need to figure out how you're going to survive, okay? Little farm or not, you still live in this capitalistic, you still live in a capitalistic country and you made a baby at almost 40 years old on food stamps. That's hella reckless. That's hella reckless. So I don't understand what food stamps has to do with anything. Uh, well, I, I mean, I didn't want to, you know, I want to have a child. I want to be married. So I did that, but you know, then you can't afford he it. Left me, so. You can't afford, okay, ma'am. So, so you asked me, what's the solution? The solution, the solution in the short term is you're a middle-aged woman, right? With a four-year-old. Are you financially stable? And the answer is no. I mean, I feed people in my community. And we have H. Like, Christ, ma'am, are you financially stable? Financially stable people are not on food stamps. I mean, if I didn't have food stamps, it would be rough, but I think I could get by. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is why my show is so important. Can you stay on no, task? No, but I mean, what's... Ma'am, are you financially what's... stable? Are you fi Ma'am, are you financially stable? Um, well, if you're talking about if I have millions... How much do you earn a month? How much do you earn a month? How much do you earn a month? Oh, like um, under, under a thousand. So what are you even doing on the internet? You work, I mean, effectively, ma'am, you're 42 years old, and if you're being honest, you shouldn't be spending time watching these programs. You should be working. You need two or three jobs. You got a four-year-old that you decided to have. We don't want to pay for your kid. We don't want to pay for your kid. There are men out here who don't have kids. They don't want to pay for your kid. Your food stamps come from who? Food stamps come from food stamps come from who? Who do the food stamps come from? They don't come from the food stamp fairy. I know. So my question is, you asking me all these philosophical questions. That's just, oh, well, this ain't a philosophical question. The question is, what are you doing having a baby at 40 years old on food stamps well, and on, and then watch a YouTube. Hmm? I was married when I had him. Mm hmm. And your husband is, and you said your husband left. Yeah. And what did your husband do for a living? Oh, he doesn't really have too much. He's a child wrangler kind of guy. He left me, so I would have stayed with him, but he, he left. So he was broke too? Well, he, well, I mean, he wanted to be like a homesteader. I don't I care what he wanted to be, ma'am. He was broke. Could he afford a child? Well, I don't know what you consider affording a child to be. Um, uh, well, uh, I consider affording a child not needing food stamps. Well, I don't know what you guys... I see, here's the... Here's, ma'am, ma'am, at the end of the day, just... I want people who are working, I want people to be able to... I, don't, I want you to be able to take care of what you get, you know? If you choose to have it... There are people who don't have children because they're not financially ready. So when you have a child at your age... So you don't get to you don't get to throw in the thing of being young. See, if you were eighteen, people give you a pass. But having a baby at thirty eight years old when you know you're broke, and you're married to somebody who's a cow wrangler or whatever, the world gives you no passes. 
You don't need to be on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, nothing. Your ass needs to be a greeter at, at Walmart, working at IHOP. I've done jobs like this. You need to get you need to get jobs. Jobs. Oh, I have, I have, I've got my child. I'm not going to just throw him to some voucher worker. And I think I want you guys to listen to the entitlement of modern women. This woman is broke. Talking about what she ain't going to do in the first world. You can only be this entitled in the first world country. First world feminism. You are out of your mind. You don't want to throw your child. Your child can't even eat. You can't even put food in your kid's mouth. Don't tell me what you ain't going to do. Somebody is taking care of your kid, not you. And you're spending time on the internet perusing philosophical topics. Your philosophical ass needs to get a philosophical job. Two of them. And move in with another baby mama. Do something because at the end of the day, ma'am, who's going to pay for your grown ass? Your kid has a, your, ki your kid gets ill. Your kid gets ill. I don't care who you live with. You're broke. You don't make $1,000 a month. You're broke. Well, I, I live with my parents. I live with my parents. And, you know, we're not like, we're not you're you're not you're not coherent this is crazy this is nuts see trifling come like, trifling like, trifling comes in all shades i mean i'm sitting here listening to this this sitting here uh, i don't uh, I, uh, I like to hear a woman make a lot of sound Flash, flash. Hear my womanly roar! Oh. Yeah! Now go home and get your fucking shine box. <laughs> you idiot woman! You idiot woman! <laughs> you idiot woman! <laughs> idiot woman! Get back in here and make me a sandwich. Shame. Winter is coming. Shame. Did I not Shame. make myself clear? This is ridiculous. Been watching me. Hey, you can just sit there and talk to yourself. Wow. <clears throat> hey, how are you? I'm fine. How are I'm you? equal opportunity, goddammit. That's some trifling shit right there. Some trifling shit. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, Godfather. How are you? I'm just sitting there. She's proud. Smile. Hi, <laughs> Arkansas's finest. God damn it! What do you got for me? Okay, well, I do have something for you on the topic, but then I also have a question for you mm -hmm. after that. Is that okay. Mm hmm. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, well, as far as the topic of is it modern women's fault? I honestly think it is because I grew up. Um, seeing a lot of married women who were basically t teaching me to be an independent woman. Like they were basically mm -hmm. like, don't need a man. Um, like I was always taught like the, what were you saying? Like the, the 66, like the cold word type of thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Execute order 66. Now how old are you again? I'm young. I'm 23, but I'm dating somebody that's 31. So, so I'm a little more. If you were, if you, but see, the modern women I'm kind of referring to is the women who taught you this stuff. At 23, right. you've legally been an adult for about five years. So you right. really can't be responsible for anything in the first 18. You got taught that stuff. Now you're finally getting to hear something else and then you can make your own mind up. Um, yeah. And that's kind of what, where my question comes from because, um, so basically my boyfriend actually in ended up introducing me to you and like I said um he's like he's older than me um mm -hmm. or whatever like so um I remember I was watching one of your I episodes. see hold on hold on just say I I see you the last you last six women in we're going to get to all of you okay go ahead you watch my last episode and go so I watched um uh, it wasn't your last episode it was an an episode that I was watching before where okay. you were speaking out how when um a woman gets with that man how she becomes a part of his life yes and 
I'm really starting to see what that means because mm. um, now I'm becoming a part of his business and things mm. like that. And now he's like opening up my mind to like look deeper. So what's the question, the sweetheart? So what's the question? They like how, what's, what's your advice um, about learning how to deal with that? Because now my life is changing. Now like I have learning to- how to deal, it. Learning how to deal with him or the situation? the change in the situation okay you got to give me more than that what's the what's the is there an issue is there a problem okay so basically um like i started before i met him i started off like going to school for certain things like okay. i got like a plan what i want to do however he um, and now you're with him wants, and he wants to change the plan he wants you to work on according he want he wants you to work on his plan Yes, he wants me to be a part of his plan, and I will okay. like to. Okay, I fine. Okay, okay. Uh, how long have you guys been engaged? We're not engaged. We're okay, talking we're, about that. Okay, no, that we don't talk about shit. Um, that's the plan. I'm, right. I'm, I'm glad you have a can-do spirit, but as a man, I can't change your plans until I change your last name. Okay, so but what is what if I like that's something that like I would like to have. I, so. I get I get it, I, but there's an order to things. If a man want, okay, look, and I'm not talking out of my ass. I, I I'm a man who's open to serious relationship, and any woman I deal with, if I'm going to change her plan, I have to have a new plan, and part of that plan must be security. You don't come change a 23 year old girl or woman's plan without. OK, it would be easy to do this if your last name was Williams and his last name was Williams. Yeah, I were married. Then you have some sort of security right now. You're just a girlfriend. Don't end up like the baby and Danny Lee. Don't change plans without changing last names. OK. Point blank period in the fucking sentence. And a man who's okay. serious about being on his stuff, he will understand and respect what I'm saying. Because if he has a woman who's willing to get on his program and do that, that's going to be a net benefit to him, short term or long term, true or false. True. Then you need then you need shares in the company. And the only way you get shares is your last name is the same. Thank you. All right. First, that was my retirement. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean look, you don't you don't you don't you Look, see, a lot of, that's why I'm looking at that Danny Lee girl. And I'm like, I don't, I'm sorry. You shouldn't have been doing all that shit uh, without Grace, then k Dude, then Curry. You shouldn't have been doing all that stuff. And he called, and then what did he do? He said, you're an official side chick. Certified side chick. You're having a baby for a man and you don't know, that's your business. Go ahead. Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How old are you? I'm a little nervous. I am 23. All right. What do you got for me? I just would like to add on your previous topic. May you refresh me on that, please? Oh, well, hold on. Let me get to the questions. If we got to get the questions, go ahead, Imani. Uh, and Go ahead. I'm going to unmute you folks, and we're going to go through the piece. Uh, to who's unmuted? Imani, unmute. Hello? Hello. Hi. Good. How, how old are you? Uh, I'm 24. All right. Uh, what's the question? Um, I just wanted to know. So I am dealing with a man, and mm -hmm. he um, he makes like over seventy thousand, and he mm -hmm. doesn't want me to work when I start to have children. And I just wanted to know um, you, how. Because um, I've um, already went to school and everything, and I kind of wanted to start my own career. How do I kind of immerse myself in that lifestyle? Wait, okay, are you what? When did you when did you guys get married? Um, about two years ago. You guys been married for how long? Two years. Okay. Um, and he wants you to do what? Um, it's not work uh, when we start to have children. Okay. Well, are you pregnant? No, no. Um, we are planning on it. Um, okay. He doesn't want you to work. Has he said what he does want you to do? 
Um, he just wants me to be home and take care of the children. Okay. Uh, and you went to college for what? Um, I have a biological science degree and um, I am a radiological technician. So that's a two-year degree? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you want you to be a state on you can still you can still be a teacher, you can tutor, you can, there are plenty of things you could do from home if you wanted to work. Um yeah. but if you're a husband but, th- but you have a husband, right? Yeah. Well then I think you listen to what your husband's asking. What's the what's the hold up? What's the what's the what's the apprehension? I think it's mainly because I have like my mom in my ear telling me that if I do mm-hmm. that then mm-hmm. he has more. And what is and what is your and what is and what is your dad saying? Um he's more just like, you know, you basically your, do are like your mom and dad are your mom and dad married are your mom and dad married yeah they are okay then, and then you listen she works to, then you yeah. listen to then you listen to your father okay you listen to your father and your husband don't let your mother wreck your house your mother controls okay. her house you are a woman now you will be a mother you're not her child leave and cleave because your mother's advice okay. is conflicting with your husband and your father, right? Yeah. Then that's a real simple choice. Follow the men. Okay. That's it. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. I mean, that's what I kind of it's kind of what I went over with that lady from uh the continent. Hey, how are you? Kari, Curry, Curry. How are you? Hi, how are you? It's I'm Corey. good. How how old are you? 30. All right, what do you got for me? What are we talking about? So I jumped in super late, but if I'm correct, we're talking about mothers. Well, we're talking about how so many modern women today are operating under programming that was given to them by their big mom and them, and it's not working. Um, It's not getting the outcome they want. I call it Order 66. Um, Are you single or are you married, by the way? Single. Uh, do you have any children? No. Do you want to be married or have kids? I do want to be married. Um, I struggle with wanting to have kids just because the previous relationships that I've been in, the co-parenting situations have always been dramatic. So I'm still open to having kids. I know. Hold on, hold on. You were, you were co-parent you were co-parenting in previous relationships. No, like with being with a guy, their co-parenting situation oh, was generally that, messy. Okay. So you dated men with children? I did. Okay. You can't judge marriage with children with a baby daddy. Say it again, I'm sorry. You can't judge marriage with Mary being married with children with judge that based on a baby daddy. It's a different, it's a different, no, it's a different scenario. Okay. You dated men with children, fine, but they didn't have custody of their child. Right? One did. Okay. He had, uh, he had full physical custody and the mother had visitation? Yes. All right. Um, My suggestion is avoid dating men with children. Because as a young woman, with, as a woman with no children, you shouldn't have this clutter in your mind. It's You're saying I want to, you, well, well, you chose to deal with men who had, uh, who came who, who, with wrecked homes. So, and if you're saying you struggle with wanting to be a mother because of situations with other people's kids, that's not healthy. It also right. it also eliminates one of the major incentives or one of the main reasons men want to marry. So this is why I don't suggest single people deal with people with children. Because your natural instinct to nurture, you're going to jump in there with your cape on your apron and try to be a girlfriend mom. That shit is messy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So you don't right. want to see a little you running? You don't want to see a little girl that look like you running around? I do. I was just operating in fear, a scared fear, scarcity situation. and lack. Yeah, yeah. fear, I scarcity and lack. Go ahead and say it. Fear, scarcity, and lack, which end up in anxiety and stress. Does this woman seem like she's yeah. not anxious about the, the the prospect of motherhood when it really shouldn't be? If you're going to be married with a man that you're married to, that should be a happy thing. You should be going into life with uh, with possibilities. Don't you want to see you and see? Don't you want to reproduce your husband? Don't you want to? The holiday is coming up. Don't you want to? Three or four years from now, have Christmas and cookies and marshmallows and s'mores and camping. I mean, I mean, goddamn, what's, what's life about? <laughs> Definitely. And that's what my question was going to be to you as far as like, um, going through therapy and finally mm -hmm. having that aha moment with myself, like self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Um, I did realize and come to the conclusion that it was selfish of me to want to be married, but not want kids. So I want to know if 30, um, is it too late to finally realize that I can jump into wanting kids or is a man going to be like, well, no, you've been not too late for no. too long. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're 30, you're not, you're not 50. You're 30, you're not 50. I mean, um, but I would say that if you're, can, <clears throat> Relationships should be entered in good faith. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would say maintain therapy so you can make sure you're attracting people who are also in process and, and going to the right place because, you know, none of this stuff happens. I mean, no, we don't have plans. Even married couples, they will tell you there are people who are trying to have babies and can't. Then there are people who go to go to get drunk one night and next thing you know, they're pregnant. Exactly. Being, a, being a parent doesn't come with instructions you make this shit up as you go you just do the best you can um let me go ahead so don't cut yourself off uh because of your previous relationships with the guys who had kids and i would say avoid dating men with children especially if you've had some bad previous situations hold on um let me unmute the other person are you seeing anybody seriously while i'm unmuting her Corey? Are you seeing I'm anyone sorry, seriously? Are you seeing anyone seriously? I'm not. Um, I, everybody I run into has kids, so yeah. it's kind of been hard. I, I've been putting myself out there. What like state do you say. live in? I'm in Missouri. Uh, uh, well, better hit a matchmaker. Better do something. <laughs> 30, 30 is 30. The Danger zone. Danger zone. Hold on. Hey, uh, how do I pronounce your name? K. What? Kiddo. How do y'all too? I ain't gonna say that. Got you to you too. <laughs> what? Do, how do you say that again? How do y'all too? Hadouken. Yeah. Okay. Hadouken. How you doing? What's up? <laughs> Good. Um. Can I please not be on the YouTube channel? Please? Okay. Hadouken. <laughs> sure. What's what you got for me? All right, so I know that the um, previous woman that was on your Zoom mentioned um, what your mother was leaving you as far as like advice in regards to marriage. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother is has been married for 30 years to my dad. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, when I was younger, she instilled in me to learn how to cook, um, learn how to clean. And like marriage has always been something that she's talked about and that she told me that I should be doing. How old are you? Like she, I'm 21. 21. All right. So let's skip to the end. We got to get to the end. We got to. Okay. Okay. Uh, 21. You're in school? Yeah. All right. What's your classification? I'm a junior. So you want to be married one day? Yeah. Okay. Are you seeing anybody seriously right now? No, I just got out of a um, relationship. Okay. Uh, how long was that relationship? Um, it lasted for two years. Okay. So, so, it, it, by what age would you like to be married? 
Um, before 27. All right. So um, who's helping you vet or pick men? Um, nobody really. Ding, 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 ding. Why not? Um, well, my mother doesn't really encourage dating right now, but she wants what is your, to get What does your father, do, what did your father say? Um, my father wants me to go to school. He wants yeah. me to focus on school right now. He doesn't uh -huh. really talk to me about, um, And he's married, and dating. your mother and father are married? Yeah, they've been married for 30 years plus. All right, well, see, that's a problem. See, this is the problem. They can they can tell you all this stuff, but they you don't know they're not showing you. They're not even talking to you about. So you need to go to your father and say, "I'm, how am I supposed to find this man or be found by this man?" You need to sit down with your dad and your mother because they should be helping you do this because you, like like all other women, you'll pick what you like, and what you like and what you need likely are two different things you can do both at the same time learn how to be what you need to be to attract the kind of man that works for you and get your education it's not an either or thing it's an and thing okay. so I would put that on them oftentimes parents don't want to deal with this because it makes them feel uncomfortable but uh, they're going to feel much more uncomfortable if you came home with a baby out of wedlock from, from from Slim Sausage. So that that don't work. All right. Um, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do overtime. I'm going to do overtime because I want to open up. We're going to do part two to this show. And for everybody who left, they're going to be mad they left. I want to talk about, I want to lead into the next part of the show about Brittany Renner. Brittany Renner uh, and what you guys thought of the interview with Brittany Renner. Yep, we're going to do part two. The, part two overtime. Brittany Renner and what you thought of the show. The issues you have. Things you think. Yeah, bring it. Because I noticed there are some folks that uh, I've heard a little scuttlebutt that, uh, yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. Men, your turn. Because I'm going to tell you, even I've seen, and I noticed she was on another, you know, she was on another platform. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to tell you. Let, gentlemen, let's talk Brittany Renner. Gentlemen, let's talk Brittany Renner. You know what? I'm going to shut this show down and I'm going to start another show. I'm going to shut this show down and I'm starting another one. Standalone show. We're going to talk Brittany Renner. <laughs>